guys, it's Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging, and I am here with Rachel Pusaro of Pusaro's Fosters. That's her um, YouTube channel, and she's also the head of sales and marketing for The Bones and Company, and that is a new raw food brand that is spreading the word about keto diets. So, so thank you so much for joining me, Rachel. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. I'm so excited. <laughs> so one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today is that, you know, within the raw feeding community, there is a lot of, you know, kind of conflict. And I won't say com kind of, it is conflict where people disagree on how we should feed our dogs. People will attack each other if someone's dog is fat, if someone asks a stupid question. And one thing that I've noticed since I've known you, and by the way, we just celebrated our one year friend anniversary on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but you are always so positive, so happy. You're I just I never see you attack a brand, attack a person, attack anything. You just always come to things with love. And I wanted to know why are you this? Why are you so cool? <laughs> oh God, I can say the same to you. I have the same question to you. Gosh. Um, no, I mean that's a great question because there is a lot of negativity. Uh, in this industry, I mean, period. And I think it's just because pet people, I think, are some of the most passionate people out there. So with that comes a lot of emotions. When I mean, there's a lot of emotions and animals, it can get a little rocky. Um, but I think for me, I think it's just keeping focus on my mission. And anytime things get rough, I always go back to my mission and what's important to me, which I always say, like, save all the damn dogs. Like, my mission is to kind of help provide content and awareness around things that help pet parents and help dogs, right? So whole fresh raw, raw feeding, uh, fostering and adopting rescue dogs, um, some good dog training tips just so that pet parents have some, um, you know, good practices to help kind of encourage a good relationship with their dog. I mean, those things are all important. And um, for me, the way that I say positive is just focusing on that and like going internally uh, when things get rough. Right. And one thing um, recently someone posted on Facebook about how, you know, people in our community, we take a lot of attacks mm -hmm. and I've learned over the years not to take these things personally. And I understand that this is a person who's worried about their dog and they're just lashing out. Um, but not everyone is, aware enough to feel that way. And so I wanted to ask, what advice do you have for people who want to get involved and start sharing their experiences raw feeders, but they're afraid of, you know, people trolling them or just attacking them? Yeah, I actually just had a call yesterday from a pet store owner that she'll watch this. Uh, she wants to start a podcast and she's terrified of exactly what you just said. And my advice was, you just got to do it. And you have to keep figure out what your purpose and what your mission is and focus on that. Because no matter what you do in life, you're going to get um, negative response, right? But especially in this industry, you will. But I think if you try to have the perspective of those that are bullying, because I look at it as a form of bullying when people are like that. Um, you know, I was a kibble feeder at one point. I was a, with my Labrador, right? Like when he was young, I got every vaccine possible, um, all the antibiotics many times me like I at one point I was that person I was very passionate about those things and so I try to put myself in their sh in someone else's shoes to understand like where that passion is and the reason people get so heated is because we all want the same thing we want the best for our dog like somebody's not going to get angry if they just don't care is the difference the the opposite of of love is indifference right so it's not hate when you hate something and you show a lot of aggression that means you care um, so I try to think of it that way but if you're on the fence of like getting out there and sharing your story or creating content just think of all the damn dogs you're going to help uh you may piss off 10 people but for every 10 people you piss off there's going to be 20 more that you've helped and inspired and that right there has to be worth it and that has to be your focus yeah i love that so um to change topics a little bit um i want to talk about the keto diet so this is something that you have really started sharing about and talking about and why did you go this route yeah so a lot of it came from um, inspiration from the keto pet sanctuary which i know you guys are all uh, aware of and a lot of the stuff from the dog cancer series that rodney did and Dr. Karen Becker I've shared. You guys know if you're watching this, you're familiar with them. But um, we believe 
uh, as, as in both of COVID, even me, me personally, that dots are broken, end of story. Um, and the reason I say that is, according to the National Institute of Health, 6 million dogs are diagnosed with cancer every year. Uh -huh. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an epidemic alarming rate, and I don't think enough people are talking about it. In fact, if you really look at other manufacturers um, or even content creators, not enough of us are talking about it because it's not... It's not easy to talk about. Like I was just in the pet store today and people ask, like, why, why would you encourage a keto diet for dogs? And I'm like, having this conversation, on average, one in three dogs have the chance of getting cancer. Um, over the age of 10, it's what, one in two at that point? Mm -hmm. So that's like a 50% odds of pursuing your dog. And I'm like, that is unexcusable. It's unacceptable. There's things out there to stop this. Diet is a big part, it's not the only thing. Um, and I believe as somebody that's putting myself out there in the, in, in terms of like content creation, whether it be personal or professional, I believe it's my responsibility to at least bring awareness to it. So people can just start asking questions. And so that's where that inspiration came from because we just believe that, and it's not even just cancer, right? Like, so cancer is at an epidemic rate and that, that enough is, is, should be, that alone should be enough. But you think about other metabolic diseases, um, you know, like a diabetes or obesity, epilepsy, these things are on a rise at an alarming rate. And not only are people not talking about it enough, not, I'm not even talking about it enough. Um, there's not a lot of tools out there for pet parents. Yeah. You know, there's not. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're not saying, you know, and I'm not saying that I can cure cancer or prevent it or any of those diseases, but here's at least a tool that you can use. Right, right. And, you know, one thing that I've noticed is, you know, every few months, there is a real big push in the media that's super anti-raw. And it usually comes on the heels of something else. So most recently, it's the class action lawsuits and the recalls because of the lead in kibble in certain brands and then the vitamin D. There's too much vitamin D in certain brands. But then all of a sudden, all of these articles come out that are super anti-raw. And I see that um, people in our community, they don't quite know how to deal with that. And so everyone's just angry about it and sharing the articles. And I came up with the idea to just go to each article and leave a comment sharing my experience as a raw feeder. So from your point of view, what do you do when you see like a massive influx of anti-raw sentiment in the media? Do you have something that you do to help like offset that negative you know, those myths basically that are being put out there? Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good uh, question. And I love that, that you do that. I know you've I've seen you do that before and that's amazing. Uh, and that's actually a good idea for people who want to create and want to help inspire, but they don't necessarily want or know how to start a blog like you or start a YouTube channel, but you can still go and like comment on these things. And that's a way of creating. Um, but for me, because I'm in the industry, Anytime something like that comes out, I get a whole flood of uh, cell phone calls, <laughs> text messages, um, and emails. So for me, it's to be quite honest, it's a little bit more reactive because you know I do have a YouTube channel, and because of that, it's given me, it just put me on a platform. So when people think of dogs, like oh Rachel Fasaro, uh, so I, I usually get quite a few questions like oh my gosh, like you know what do you think of this? And so a lot of a lot of it for me honestly is more uh, reactive. On an internal, on an internal sense, I, you know, I see those things, but I don't really let it. Uh, I try not to. I think sorry, but I try not to let it impact me or what I'm doing or slow me down. If anything, it inspires me to create more. So every time I see something like that, it just gives me this like, yeah, fire in my belly. Honestly, I'm like, okay, I may not be able to, you know, combat those big pet food issues, but I can go create another YouTube video to talk about raw fresh food. And if I do that enough and I encourage other people to do that, eventually our voice will be heard. Yeah, I love that. So last question I want to ask is in the time that you've been part of this community, what's something that you've completely changed your mind about? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, uh, there's a few. I would say, oh, one thing that I've completely changed my mind about, and it's pretty relevant, um, is spaying and neutering at a young age. So for dogs, <laughs> um, I am heavily, you'll see on my YouTube channel, I'm heavily focused um, and involved in rescue work and fostering and adopting. So for years, 
I was preaching, uh, spay and neuter, spay and neuter, as soon as you can, as soon as you can. I had no idea that spay and neutering at a young age can actually have some pretty harmful um, uh, things that happen to the dog. And so that's something I completely changed my mind on. I really dug into that. I give a lot of thanks to Dr. Karen Becker because she's done some research and shared some really great things on that. And that's something, yeah, I completely changed my mind on. So now I'm of the mindset, you know, hold off as long as possible. I support either side. I can see benefits of both sides, kind of a very sensitive topic to some people. Um, but I'm definitely much more open-minded about it. And I waited with uh, my dog as late as possible. And yeah, so that's part of the change of mind on. Awesome. Yeah. Rachel, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for being such a positive voice in the community. You're such like a, I don't know, you inspire so many people around you and that I just hope that you just never stop because you're yeah. a huge motivation to me. Thank you.